Hi, I would like to welcome you to MOTC Training, Ministry Outreach Training Center, and I'm Ollie Brown, and I will be your pastor and teacher for the next hour as we study the power of words. Uh, today is going to be the power of our words. Let's go before the Father in prayer. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, giving you glory, giving you praise and thanksgiving for this day. This is truly the day you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad. We thank you, Father God, for this word going forward in power and might. All of you, Holy Spirit, you know what we need to hear and we know uh, 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 all the, uh, what you give us. We will grow into it. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you praise and glory. Amen. All right. We've been thinking of uh, studying on the power of our words and the power of our words. We know the power of words, God giving us power and giving authority over all the works of the devil. God gave it, he, so he told us, that, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them dominate it, let them rule and reign upon the earth. Let them be a speaking spirit just like we are. God said, God saw what he said. Everything God said, it came to pass. Everything God, God uh, so God told us, I want men I want my children to be able to speak, speak in spirit, speak things into existence. And so we know the power of words. He's given us authority over uh, our words. He's given us, we're supposed to speak the right words. It is power so great that it's capable of producing life or death, depending on how we use it. That's how powerful words are. The Bible tells us our words are so powerful they can bless one minute or curse the next, encourage, discourage. They can hurt, heal, tear down, and build up. And see, they can tear down the kingdom of God and build the kingdom of God up. It's, it's how you use the words. Our words can even influence the way we act as, as, and, and, and feel as well as determine our attitude toward uh, our life. You have a negative attitude, you have a ne negative words produced after their kind, and so you see positive attitude, positive words produced after their kind. And so we're going to get into more in-depth study, that means stretching the surface, <laughs> getting to uh, knowing how to use the, our words. The, the, the power uh, uh, of uh, the weapon of, is, uh, is the tongue. It's a, it's a weapon, and the, and the ammunition is the word we use. We are what we say. You know, people always say, you are what you eat. Well, in a sense, that's true. If you eat this word of life, it'll transform you by the renewal of your mind. And you continue to do that. Jesus said, if you continue my word, you should know the truth. And the truth will free you and make you free. So we're going to continue studying this word. And we're going to start in uh, uh, James 1.19. So let's turn to James 1.19. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath, slow to get angry. Why? You listen. Be swift to hear, slow to speak. Why are we going to be slow to speak? Because we're going to make sure uh, we form our words. We're going to make sure we speak life to our life and not death to our life. We want, we want to uh, 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 season our words with grace so the hearer the hear can be encouraged. And we want to be slow to get angry because once a person gets angry, they are liable to say anything and everything will come out this mouth. So we want to be uh, uh, mindful of these things. And let's turn to 1 Peter 5, 8. <clears throat> and the Word of God says, we were on this trip a, a, quite a while last week, last time. It said, be sober, be valiant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he might devour. Have you ever wondered why he had to seek whom he might devour? See, our words, if he could devour anybody and anything, any, any person, he would devour the whole world and we would be out without hope. But he, he says, one of the definitions of the word sober is to be cautious in action or speech. In other words, we need to be valiant, that is to say, be watchful to what we say. That's why you pray, put, oh Lord, put a watch over my mouth. Put a watch over my mouth, keep the door of my lips. Help me. Help me, Holy Spirit. I always ask the Holy Spirit to help me. I ask the Holy Spirit to help me a lot because I need help. He's our helper, especially when I'm in the traffic. I really, I call upon the Holy Spirit to help me. Help me to see, help me to obey the law. Help me to uh, 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 walk in patience. Help me to speak life to the next driver in front of me or behind me or side of me. Not death to their life, but life to their life. And so uh, speaking uh, faith-filled words is God's way to bring things into existence. 
and we are created in the very own image as he is so are we in this world so, so, so when we speak faith filled words that's what God wants to do he wants us to feel, speak his words say what he says continue let's look at Matthew uh, 12 uh, 36 and 37 it said, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall get account thereof in the day of judgment. For by your words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. Speaking for God's word in faith will always bring you in a victory for every trial. It will bring you in victory. So we speak, we say what God says. We're in Revelation 12, 11, and, and it says, They overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. Well, they overcame, uh, 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 so how did they overcome Satan when they were uh, under attack by, uh, by him with sickness? Well, they overcame by the word uh, of, of God. They overcame because uh, let God's word be true and every man, uh, every, uh, man a, a word a liar. When a doctor says there's no hope, he's, he's saying there's no hope. I don't have no hope for you. I don't have no confident expectation of good in your life. I don't have no hope for you. Well, we don't receive that evil report. That's a lying vanity. We as children of God, we have to, uh, 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 we have to choose to believe God instead of what the doctors say, or the lawyers say, or the police department say, or, or the mortgage people say, or what our own mind says, if it's in opposition of God's word. It says, uh, uh, they chose God's word over the doctor and spoke the word of God in faith. With Jesus' stripes, I'm healed. I'm not trying to be healed. I'm not trying to get my healing. I am the healed. I am healed. Satan is trying to get us to agree with a lie that he's trying to take our healing. He wants us to speak death to our life. And we're supposed to be speaking life to our life. And so... Um, uh, uh, with Jesus, his stripes, I'm healed. They were healed, they overcame, and they were saved by the blood of the Lamb and the words of their testimony. And God told us, and the word of God said in 1 Corinthians 1 21, for God, uh, for God in his wisdom made it impossible for people to know him by means of their own wisdom. Instead, by means of, of, of the so called foolish message we preach, God decided to save those who believe. One meaning of, uh, uh, he decided to save those who believe. Over in uh, Hebrews 10, 23, he says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he, uh, for he is faithful that promise. God said it, and it's a done deal. See, he's faithful. We don't measure our, our confidence in our faithfulness. It's my faith that did it. I'm, 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 faith, uh, I'm believing in his faithfulness. His faithfulness. God is faithful, that promise. One meaning of faith is consistent uh, or steadfastness of profession or confession. This means to say the same thing continuously without wavering. It says, let us hold fast. Let us hold fast. Saying what God says. Profession means to make an open declaration of, to confess publicly, and to affirm one's belief in something by saying or doing. So we're going to hold firmly to the word of God. God is not a man should lie, nor the son of man should repent. Have not God said it? Will he not do it? His word will not return to his void, but it shall come to that thing he said. His word. So what are we supposed to say? His word. Because he said it will not return to him void. So how can it be returned to him unless we return it to him by saying what he says? We give it back to him. Hebrews 3.1 says, and tell us that Jesus is a high priest of the profession of our faith. The words of our mouth play vital roles in our salvation. We confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised you from the dead. That's, that's how we receive our salvation. That's how. It's in Matthew 10, 23, uh, 33, uh, 32 and 33 says, whosoever, that's you, that's me, therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny, that is to say, reject the truth by not confessing or by confessing something contrary to uh, God's word, me before him, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. So you confess with your mouth, you believe God raised you from the dead, and, 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 and God has said, okay, this is the way I uh, 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 into salvation. By believing. First, we have to hear the word preached. 
and accept that what we hear as being the truth. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God, as Romans 10, 17. Secondly, we believe in our hearts, have the faith of God. He said, we believe in our hearts. We have to believe in our, it has to be in our hearts. And out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth will speak. And let's turn to Matthew 20, um, um, Mark 22, 11, 22. And Jesus answered them, said, have the a faith of God. I have the God kind of faith. For truly I say to you, whosoever should say to this mountain, be moved and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that what he says shall uh, 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 come, he shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore I say to you, all things, whatever you ask, pray, and believe you shall receive them, and it will be yours, or you shall have them. You believe. You say to this mountain. See, we have the power to speak to the circumstances. We have the power and authority to speak to our, 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 the chaos, to speak to the lie, to speak to the, whatever's going on. We have the power and authority to say. And we believe with our hearts that whatever we say should come to pass, we will have so whatsoever we say. Now, what, about, what have we been saying, though? God said, let his word be true and every, every, man, or every other word a lie. I don't care what it look like. God's word is forever settled. God's word is one we, we stand on and we believe and we trust in, rely and depend upon what God said. Thirdly, we, confess, we need to confess with our mouth that which we believe in our hearts. God, uh, let God be true and every man a liar. So let's turn to Proverbs 4.20 and we're going to be reading from 20 to 23. <coughs> Excuse me. My son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sin. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they, God's word, are life unto those who find them, and health, medicine, and healing to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence. Guard your heart more than anything else. Woo! More than anything else? Because it's, it's, it's uh, because the issues, the source of your life flow from it. So it says, guard your heart more than anything else. The word issue here means source, come forth, come out, to proceed from, to be born or spring for, forth. It means offspring, descendants, children, which is to give birth to. In other words, out of our hearts is a sort of giving birth our life to things. And whatever is in the, our hearts will eventually come out of our mouth in form of words to bring into being that which we believe. And that's powerful. Whatever is in our heart. See, you, have to, you can identify your own self where you are about a subject. Because what are you coming out your heart? What are coming out your mouth? Because it, it has to be in your heart. People say, I didn't mean it. Uh, or they'll say something, they'll curse you out. Well, I didn't mean it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, but you, it came out your heart when you got angry. Well, it had to have been in there. It had to have been in abundantly to oh, oh, come out your heart that way. No, you didn't mean it after you thought about it. Now you say, look at it and say, well, I didn't mean it. But at the time you were saying it, you meant it. Because it was in your heart. Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Likewise, they that do not love it watch over it with care and guard with their tongue, t what their tongue says will also eat the fruit thereof. By chances are it will not be pleasant to eat. Sometimes we eat the fruit of, of some things. It's not pleasant that, that it came to pass. We say things that uh, 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 look back and say, oh, that was harsh, that was cold, that was critical. Boy, Lord help me. I got I to gotta continue to renew my mind because that was in my heart. It is cri critical to remember that Jesus said that the good treasure of the, your heart brings forth good things. And the evil treasure of your heart brings forth evil things. In other words, whatever it is in our heart that which we believe is what we will speak out of our, our, of our mouth. And bring into existence whether it's good or evil. In evil, and Hebrews 3.12 says the unbelief is considered an evil heart. So when we speak in unbelief, it's considered evil. 
contrary to God's word. So we were very mindful of not believing God's word. We want to believe God's word. And James 3.10 tell us, out of the mouth proceeds blessing and curses. Out of that same mouth. He said, my brothers, these things ought not be so. Out of the same mouth. Gotta remember, when we were born again, when we were born again, we got a brand new spirit. Our, our, our mouth was still perverted. Since the fall of Adam and Eve, their their they might they were they they are their uh, uh, soul was perverted, and everything about it was perverted. Everything evil came in. So uh, um, let's turn to Proverbs 4:24. It says, uh, "It says uh, to put away a forward mouth and and put forth from us perverse lips." So. What exactly is forward mouth and perverse lips? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. The word forward means to not, to, this, uh, or to twist, to make crooked. It also means headstrong, perverse, in opposition to, or in disobedience. In short, forward speech is speaking negative words that are in opposition and in disobedience to the word of God. We don't want to do that. The word perverse means to turn aside, depart, refuse to do right, self-will, and turn in from the true purpose. Therefore, we are to put away from us a forward mouth, then we are to put away any speech that is in opposition to God's word. We've got to put it away. Any speech. And the only way we're going to do that, we've got to renew this mind. We've got we to get some more information inside of our hearts. God will hasten to form his word. But if we are to be obedient to God, then we must humble ourselves and submit ourselves unto God by coming into agreement with what his word says. So when we say with his stripes we are healed, we have to come in agreement with that, no matter what it looks like. No matter what the circumstances say. We have to say we are rich because of Jesus. Not, not, not based on our pocket, not based on the uh, zero balance bank account. It's not based on that. It's based on the word of God. Let God's word be true. And every man, every man a liar. What we feel and see needs to be treated as a lie. That's a hard saying. Because we are emotional people and we always move by emotions. And a lot of times we are act out, out of our emotions. But he said if our emotion is not in line with God's word and our feelings are not in line with God's word, you treat them as a lie. They're not, I mean, that's a lie. I mean, I'm not going to focus on what my body says. I'm not going to focus on what my mind says. I'm not going to focus on my emotions. Because your emotions is it's like the wind. One minute it blows it's real strong, the next minute it's ceased. You, be up, you can be flying high in the morning. I mean, you wake up in the morning, you, I mean, you got a praise song going on in your heart. I mean, you just feeling so up and just everything is all right with the world. And then the phone rings and somebody comes with some negativity and boy, you just take a dive. You low, you just just as low as you can go. So you can't be moved by that. You can't be moved by your children and your family members, your husband, your wife, or any. You got to be moved by this word of God because this is what this is what's true. We need to stop turning aside and departing from God's word by putting what we think or feeling above His word. You need to stop it. And, and you know, sometimes you uh, uh, you be running around thinking, "Oh, the Lord is good. God is good. God is good all the time." And we'll say all the right words. But when trouble come, a situation come, and when Jesus said, "In this world, you're gonna have some trials and tribulation, but you might have peace," and that is true, then your peace come from knowing, knowing that He is the deliverer. He is the one that's gonna see you through the, the trials and tribulation. It's already done. All you gotta receive the truth of what He's done. And start praising him, being grateful. And thank you, Lord. You make it a way out of no way. Thank you, Father God. It's working out for my good. Even as I stand here, this, this trial and tribulation, it's, a, it's just, it just it's, 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 it's no longer, I'm not going to focus on what's going on on the scene. I'm not going to look at the scene because the scene is temporal. I'm going to keep my eyes steadfast, looking into Jesus, my author and fish in my faith. That's where I'm going to stand. And I got to be a mindset. There has to be a, 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 a part where we got to come into the knowledge of the truth and receive that truth and stand on that truth. We need to quit being self-willed by turning from the true purpose of God's word and refusing to do what is right, which is to come into agreement with what the Bible teaches. 
human reason said I would be lying if I said I was healed, if I still look, as, look and, and fell sick. That's human reasoning. That's not God's reasoning. God's way is faith. Call those things be not as though they were. So, okay, see, we got, we, we, uh, Proverbs 3, said, 3 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will make your path smooth. He will direct your path. He's working it out. He's working it out. I have opportunity as an minister that you have going to have an opportunity. I still have an opportunity now to minister to people. And they come and they call with the different situations and we're, we're, we're responsible for giving them the truth of God's word. Not our opinions. What, what we would do. If what we would do would be opposition from God's word is perverted. We got to give them the truth of what God says. Not what we think he says or what we believe we should, they should do. Girl, if I was you, let me tell you what I would do. If it's not lined up with the king of glory, it's not lined with this engrafted word, it's not lined up with what God said to do, we're going to be in error. We're going to tell them what this word says. And we don't know what the word said, I'll call you back. I, I'm not going to make up something as I go. I'm going to call you back. I'll get back to you. And you go look it up and see what the Word of God says about that subject that you were, they were inquiring about. So you won't be in error. If you believe in your heart, uh, God's Word that says out of the heart are the issues, source of life. And stay in agreement with God's Word by speaking in faith. With Jesus' stripes, with the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Then the manifestation of your healing can be born or brought forth in your body. Healing has already been provided for us. It's already been paid for. It's a matter of you receiving this truth in your heart and having it manifest in your body by holding fast to the, your profession of faith. Holding on to what God's word says. No matter what it looks like. No matter what's going on. And you, can, you never can go wrong by saying, I'm healed. You can never go wrong by saying, I'm rich. You can never go wrong by saying, God is my source. God is my soul. Because that's what the word says. He never can go wrong. And so, uh, healing has already been paid. So keep your lips from turning from their true purpose, which is to bring forth blessings by speaking what God says in, this, in his word. Remain, remain fully persuaded that God is faithful, that promise. Fully persuaded. God is faithful. You know, God is faithful, that promise. That's not just, you no, know, he truly is. There's so many, you know, we are the people that overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. Satan want to steal our testimony, want to steal our faith, he want to steal our belief in God's word. He want to try to get us to agree with the lie. But if you look back on your testimonies and see what God has done already in your life, where you know there was no other way. You know could nobody have brought you through that. There was not I mean, could nobody have made it right but God. And you remember that when you're going through the hard times, he's the same yesterday and the day forever. He said, I change this now. I'm the same. So my, my strength come in with him, with, in my relationship with him, knowing he is the one I put my trust in. Not the bank, not the people, not nobody. Because the minute you start putting your faith in a person and what they're going to, they become your God or their source, they're going to let you down. God has never ever turned on you to keep your eyes on him. You see, uh, you see, just like gravity is a natural law, speaking words is also a spiritual law. This spiritual law of speaking words will work for you or will work against you. It will work for you at your advantage or it will work to, uh, to your disadvantage, but it will always work. Learn to speak positive in agreement with God's word and you will always be victorious over the en enemy in every circumstance. However, if you're not sober, watching closely what you say, and you give play to the devil and speak negative words contrary or opposition to God's word, then the enemy will overcome you and the devil will devour you. It is your choice. Choose this day. You have to choose which way you're going to go. Isaiah 53, 5 and 4 and 5 says, 
They tell us that Jesus bore our grief and carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions and his stripes, and, and with his stripes we are healed. With his stripes. Jesus did not bear those stripes in vain. Those stripes are bore upon his back are our healing so we can do not have to bear sickness, disease, pain in our bodies. He bore every known, every known disease that mankind could go through. He was beat. He was whipped. The stripes upon his back for us not to carry the pain, for us not to carry all the diseases and the sickness. By his stripes, we are the healed. Not trying to get healed, we are the healed. When the symptoms of sickness or disease try to come into your body, resist them in the name of Jesus and boldly say with the, with, with, uh, the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. Do not give the uh, devil any place. Uh, uh, you see the in, uh, initial symptoms are only false evidence appearing real and it's called fear. John 10.10 10 says, The thief coming not to, but to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come for you have a life and have that life more abundantly. The devil is your enemy, not God. Satan is after the word. That's what he's after. The sown in your heart. He's after the word. He's after your trust in the Lord. He wants to, uh, 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 he wants to steal your help, joy, peace, prosperity. He wants to steal your testimony. But must, above all, he wants to steal that word that's sown in your heart. Jesus, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil and give to you abundant life. The word abundant here means more than the sufficient, more than enough, and more than capable. He gave you a, a sufficient, a, 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 a capable life. Being a Christian it, it, it makes your life better than those who are not Christians. We're the light of the world. People are looking at us and we call ourselves a child of God to see how we're going to act or react to any given situation. They're watching. They're watching to see if, you're gonna, if you believe, you're going to act or you, you really do believe what you're always preaching or always saying to them when, 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 when the uh, trouble come your way, when trials and tribulation come your way. If you, the dad is to say, if you are, or know you are in Christ, you are a doer of the word of God. We're supposed to not lord over people. We're supposed to be the light of the world so people can draw them, be drawn to Jesus. Do of that word we hear. That's not, that's not just talking about it. That's not just always talking. And then when, you're, when, you're, when people are watching, or when, they, when things happen, what's coming out of our mouth? What are we saying? Or how we, are we acting? He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Bless the Lord, mouth. <laughs> bless the Lord, words. Bless the Lord. Remember that speaking words, good or bad, is a spiritual law, just like gravity is a physical law. Every law that is established, is established of God is designed to work toward our good if we obey them. God is working it out. God is working out everything, all together, uh, all of the things together for the good of those who love the Lord. God is working things out in our life. We have to believe that. However, they can and will work against us if we do not abide by them. Okay, let's say for instance, if you throw a rock in the air, it will respond to the law of gravity and come back down. So you better watch. You better be watching and be prepared to get out of the way or get hit. Likewise, if you throw words out, they also will respond to the law of blessings and cursing. Are you ready for the for, for the uh, uh, death of life to come back? A death to come back to you. So you got to watch what you throw, how you throw words around. But watch. Be fast to think, so to speak, and so to get angry. By your words you justify, by your words you are dim. It says, um, Romans 3, 4, tell us that we might be justified in our sin and overcome the enemy, the devil, whom we are judged, or tested, or tried. So how are we judged? 
Well, how are we justified, set free? We are set free or delivered from our trials by the word of our mouth if they are faith-filled right words. What you say. And we are condemned by our words if we speak perversely or contrary to God's word. If God's words say one thing and man said something that is different, then what man is speaking is a forward or perverse because it is the opposition to what God says. Every word we speak will work, either work for us or they will work against us. We have been given a free will and we have been given a choice. Choose how you're going to speak. It, it, it is God's will for us to speak right words. In, in 1 Peter 2.24 he said, With the stripes of Jesus we are healed. The word of God is true. Therefore, if, any, if you, and therefore, if and when the symptoms of sickness or disease come upon us, don't get into agreement with what man says by saying that you must be coming down with something. Time the symptoms come, a little sniffle come, uh, it must be the flu. The devil, he comes through thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. He come and say, um, it's an allergy. No. I, I rebuke that. Ain't no allergy. I ain't got no allergies. Uh, it's sinuses. No, I rebuke that. No, I, I don't have no sinus problems. It must be the flu. You know, it does feel like I got the flu though because my back is hurting too. See, you, you have to be mindful of, of, of the tricks, the strategies. Those thoughts and ideas that come around your head so fast and you and before you know anything, you've been you been in greed with the lie. Before you know anything, I mean it's so fast. If you don't you, you don't be on uh, uh, mindful or, or, or focus on God and God's word, you will and you can say, wait a minute. I was with this person um, uh, yesterday, and they uh, they been had a little challenge at the at the, um, the gym, and. Uh, she said, I think I got, I have a, a diabetes. No! Why would you say that? Why would you even come, because she'd been listening to the lies of the devil. What you got it, what you have is healing. Right. Healing in your body, that's what you have. Do you actually, and I had to stop. <laughs> God is so awesome. I mean, right in the middle of it, I had a little sidebar. While we was getting our exercise on, I had to get a little sidebar and minister for about a five. Because I, I work out with her all the time. I said, death and life is in the power of your tongue. You don't want to speak death, uh, death to your life, do you? Well, you're not going to decree and declare you have diabetes. She said, oh, that's right. Oh, no, I don't have no diabetes. That's okay. You have healing. It says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. You are healed. Heal will manifest in your body if you do not waver and cast away your confidence in God, in His Word. Satan is a liar and there is no truth in him. Everything starts with a symptom. Uh, 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 just, just a symptom. False evidence appearing real. It's a symptom. Symptoms are nothing but a sign. You have heard the doctor say, watch out for the symptoms. You know, what kind of, when you first go in the doctor's office, he'll want to know, what's your symptoms? He's getting you to tell, create a lie before you can even go in. You can say, I'm under attack. But you don't have to give in to, he was, what is the symptoms? And you're going to tell him what the symptoms are, and he's going to say, oh, that's what it is. And you diagnose yourself. <laughs> Most of the time, you come up with a back, hey, or you're challenged with an attack on your back. And he said, Oh, uh, uh, you, you lift anything? Strength? You been, what have you been doing lately? Well, I did a lot of walking and I picked up a, a big old heavy box, about 45 pounds. He said, that's it. That's a strain. No, no nothing. And what they're they going to give you? Pills. All right, it in. Moving right along. But you diagnose yourself. See, see, I'm not, I'm not, uh, they told me, uh, uh, I went to the doctor and they told me uh, I had uh, uh, diabetes and I told them, that's a lie. That's a lie, a straight out of the pit of hell. I don't receive that. He looked at me. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the? I said, that's a lie. 
I'm, I'm healed by Jesus' stripes. I'm, I'm the heal. Diabetes don't have no power over me. They don't have no authority over me. I, I curse that to the root. He, he said, well you, well, you better get on your game. I, I'm on my game. I got the word of life. Uh, speaking the right words, but God wants to speak the right word. And one of the key principal thing, uh, 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 things a believer must do in order to live a victorious life and overcome the enemy in every circumstances, he mu we must speak the right words, God words. One way to effectively resist sickness to is speak to the mountain by saying, "No sickness are, are not allowed in my body." It's not allowed. Every, every, every germ, every germ that touches, try to touch it to the, my body must die immediately now. Speak to it. That's the mountain God is talking about. He's not talking about a physical mountain. I go out there, I'm going to move Mount Everest. No. Got these mountains in your life. Move them. If you don't like what they, you don't like where you are right now, do something about it. Start speaking different. Start saying what God said. Start taking authority over uh, different things in your life. Create. We are, cre we, are, we are speaking spirits. Just in made in his image and his likeness. He's, he's, he, he creates stuff. Change the way you speak. It is written with the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. So in the name of Jesus, I resist you, you flu. And command every symptom to leave my body. Pain, in the name of Jesus, I command you to leave my body now. Aching back and muscles, knee joints, I speak peace to you in the name of Jesus and command you to relax. I command you to walk in healing right now in the name of Jesus. Say you are alive and there is no truth in you. I hold up the shield of faith against you, Satan, quenching all the fiery dots, lies of the enemy. I resist you, Satan, in every lying symptom in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name above every name. Now regard, regardless of how you feel, act by faith as if you are healed. The same way you acted when you went to work, when you, when you went to work, got up every morning, early in the morning to go to work, you act like he was well. You, when you went to work, act like it. Act like this word is true. It's not about how you feel. It's not about what this body is trying to tell you. It's about what God's word says. Act like you are healed. Remember that these are only symptoms, lying vanities. And only false evidence appearing real unless you give in and accept them. If you accept them, you have them. I remember one time I was laying in bed and I might have told, you know, you get telling your testimonies, but that's the way the Holy Spirit leads you. I was laying in bed and I was under attack. I was under attack, but I don't know what you call it. Whatever name, it was, Jesus' name was above that name. And I was shaking and I was rattling and I was hot. And I was cold, and I was, I mean, I didn't know which way, which way I was going. And I, I, I had a, 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 my uh, TV on a Christian station, listen to the word. They were bringing me cold water. They were bringing me hot tea. They were bringing me ice chips. They were bringing me, I, 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 I'm sweating and shaking. And all of a sudden, I started praising God. And I started thanking the Lord. Glory to your name, Lord. I'm healed. I'm healed. I walk in divine health. I thank you, Lord. No weapon form against me will prosper. And I kept a pre And the pastor was on the, the minister was on the TV. I got a jumping around there and I started pre preaching the word of God. I preached myself out of the bed. My kids came in and thought I was losing my mind. God, I was just, just shouting and, and praising God. And walked right out of that. But that was, a, that was a lying vanity. It was trying to get me to accept those lying symptoms. But I started speaking, it was, I was speaking the word of God. And, and, and healing manifested. Whatever it was. I don't know, I, I'm not going to even give it a name. Because the one thing about it, whatever his name was, the, the devil, what the world called it, Jesus said, my name is above every name that's named. As the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess to the glory of God. Every knee. So whatever I cursed it to the root. You see, so if, you don't, if you don't start standing on this stuff, you, be, you become uh, uh, double-minded. We don't want to be refused to be double-minded. You got to be refused to be double-minded. One minute you, you be saying what God said, the next minute you're saying what you feel. Refuse to be double-minded by giving in and saying how bad you feel. 
You just prayed a wonderful spiritual prayer, taking authority over these symptoms. So don't nullify and cancel uh, uh, out your prayer by being double-minded, by speaking negativity, saying how bad you feel. When you pray, don't go back and, you know, the phone rings, somebody says, hi, girl, you just don't understand, you just don't know. Then you have a bragging war. Who, who going who to outdo who? Girl, let me tell you about my birth. Like, yeah, my birth side, uh uh, honey, let me tell you how Arthur rode me. Maybe he rode me all. I mean, come on. <laughs> Have you ever walked upon people and they be having a bragging wars? Hey, oh. Long, make sure we're not one of them. It said, How bad you remember in, in James 1 7 and 8 warned us that a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. And the teacher does not even to think about a double-minded man should receive anything of the Lord. Not that God is not going to give it to you. He's already been given. You're so double-minded, you can't receive anything from the Lord. Double-minded. You need for your everyday walk to agree with what you pray. Otherwise, you'll be double-minded. You pray the prayer. You pray the prayer for whatever you pray the prayer of. Whatever you need from the Lord. Whatever you believed, you stay with it. Don't be double-minded. If you believe in God for a house, you believe in God for a husband, you believe in God for a wife, don't be double-minded after it did not manifest in the, in yesterday. You go back, forget it. I didn't want a husband anyway. Ah, you know, you know, apartments are cheaper in the long run. That's double-minded. Perverse. You already agreed. You already agreed. Hold fast the confession of your faith. He's, he's faithful, that promise. He is faithful, that promise. So you, suppose you study in your, in your authority as a believer over the symptoms of sickness this morning in the name of Jesus. Resist the sickness, the enemy by trying to put up on you and, uh, 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 and you go to work and say, your co uh, say to your co-workers, they ask you how you feel. And you say, I feel like I've been ran over by a Mack truck. I must be coming down with the flu or, or something. You're never minded. In the Bible says you're unstable in all your ways. Don't, 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 you can't receive anything from the Lord. You speak in opposition to what God says. He said by his stripes you are healed. You, you do, you, you're using perverse lips, perverse words, perverse speech. It's in opposition to what God says. We walk by faith, not by what we see and what we feel. You see, these circumstances, what you see and feel will change. Only if we remain steadfast in our faith. What we see and feel will change if we believe what God says. Stand fast. Therefore, by agreeing with what you feel, you're no longer speaking the right words. You no longer speak it right. Your speech had become forward or perverse, and you just nullify every positive prayer that you prayed just that morning. You can forget about receiving your healing that has already been purchased for you by the stripes of Jesus. Until we once again become single-minded to your resist the enemy until the end. Remember, as long as you resist, it, resist and remain single-minded and unwavering, the devil will flee from you every time. Just in case you're wondering, sickness and disease are not your friend. There ain't nothing friendly, there's nothing good about them. They're not your homeboys, they're not your buddies. That's not your running partners. That's the ones you put to get authority over. You don't glory. Some people glory in sickness and disease. I don't know, they glory in the idea of getting attention. And they glory in the idea that people are feeling sorry for them and all that. But that's no glory in that. Jesus paid the price for us to walk in com complete divine health. And we're going to brag about sickness and disease or complain and remember about it instead of taking authority over it? Buddy, you get in line with God's word right now. I'm speaking life to you. I'm speaking life. And see, this is why we, this is why we continue to study and, and get in his word of God and continue so we can re, this is, keep the, renewing this mind so we'll be able to speak the truth. Sickness and disease is your enemy. They're from the devil, not from God. Proverbs 12, 18 says, But the tongue of the wise is, is, is wise is help. But the tongue of the wise is help. 
Therefore, use your tongue wisely. Don't say the first little sneeze, oh, I must be coming down with the flu, or maybe a cold, or maybe an allergy. Satan wants you to choose one. He don't care which one you choose. You just want to choose one. The devil goes around uh, about as a roaring lion whom to seek, to see whom he may devour. So if, you, so if his lion symptoms fall upon you and do not stand against the wiles, trickery, and lies of the enemy and resist him, and then you will be overcome by him. Proverbs 15.4 tell us, Wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness is a breach in the spirit and the heart. The word wholesome means entire, complete, healthy sound, tending to promote health, nourishing, or in other words, positive. The word breach means ruin, breaking, destruction, and a breakdown. Perverse speech, speaking words are contrary to what the Word of God says about us, break down our hearts. That's what perverse speech does, it breaks down our hearts. This is, called, this is what is called negative speaking, which tear down our drain our heart. And that is, that is absolutely true. You, you can be really feeling wonderful, and you get around negative people, and they will literally, you have to get away, because they drain you. They will drain, it, 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 it will drain you to the point where you just almost, you be, they get to talking negative, and then you go, we go be going lower and lower and lower. But I'm pretty soon you just don't have no, even what's wrong? They, it's draining you. And that's why a lot of times we, 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 we gotta be mindful of going to uh, churches where the words are so negative and perverse, preaching opposition to what God's word says. It's not, it's not feed, it's not building you up, but it's tearing you down. Faith come by hearing, by hearing the word of God. It's not, you don't feel alive, you feel depleted, getting worse and worse, going every Sunday or every two or three times a week. That's why you got, the person got a word, got to line up with the word of God when they minister. You need to line up with the word of God. And you need to line up with the word of God when you minister. Sometimes I go to, I've heard person, people say, uh, God will, uh, if you don't use your gift, God will take it away. And I'm going, no, that's not true. And you go, you be watching, you be watching TV or hearing me, and, you, and I be, put, I put the TV on, 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 <laughs> on pause. <laughs> Wait a minute, that's not true. I go get the word, and I'm preaching to the preacher. And I said, what's, what's the point? So I have to cut him off. Cut. Because be like, you eat the meat and spit out the seeds, but if you got so many seeds, you, go, you can't even eat. You almost got, cut it off. Because it's draining, it's draining your heart, it's draining you. I'm, I'm ministering to the minister and he can't even hear me because he's on TV. And I said, oh my goodness. I said, well, that's why you got to be mindful of those things. Faith come by hearing and by hearing the word of God. We got to guard our heart. We got to guard with all diligence. We got to guard our heart. Out of an issue of life, you got to guard that. You don't want to hear all that stuff. Get inside of you because it, well, it has an effect on you. Out of the overflow of your heart, your mouth is going to speak. Just say you think it doesn't have an effect on you. Listen to the weatherman. And you say, tonight it's going to be raining. It's going to be thunder and lightning. Phone ring. Somebody come up, girl. You better go get on home. It's going to be thunder and lightning. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be hurricane around 11 o'clock. You, you don't know nothing. You repeated that. It, it influences you. Matthew 12, 35 says, Out of a good treasure, God's word, and positive faith-filled uh, uh, treasure will be spoken out of the mouth or uh, confessed before men, will bring forth good things or uh, bear good fruit. But the evil treasure of your heart, things opposing God's word and negative speaking will bring forth into your life bad or evil things which are not desirable. In other words, we are, we bring bad things upon ourselves. Uh-oh. <laughs> Say, how? How do we do that? By the negative words of our mouth that we speak forth from our hearts. 
If you don't like the way your life is looking by now, we're going to change the way we speak. We've got to change the way we hear. In other words, we've got to study to show ourselves approved. We've got to renew this mind and keep renewing and keep renewing it. A daily, a daily walk. Keep, keep, see, we bring it up on ourselves. What's in our hearts, our mouth cannot help but speak. For God's word said that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And, and what we continue to listen to will eventually enter into our hearts. That's what I'm talking about. Can it, what, you, what you continue to listen to will eventually get into your heart, good or bad. If we want to speak and say what God's word says and be in agreement with the word of God, then we have to spend time reading and studying his word. That's why 2 Timothy 2.15 has told us to study. Study, 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 study. Study, 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 study to show yourself approval. Work and be not ashamed. Rightly, if I the word of truth. You got to study. I can't study for you. Can't, can't nobody study for me. I got to study for myself. I got to get the word on the inside so it can be real to me. I got to get it on the inside of me. The truth. So I can continue in this truth and the truth will liberate me. Absolutely make me free. Let's look at Proverbs 17, uh, 26. It says the word, it says, um, he that has, has a forward heart finds no good and that he has, and, and, and he that has a perverse tongue falls into mischief. The word mischief means bad, evil, adversary, calamity, sorrow, and trouble. There is nothing good about sickness and disease. And know the word fall, which has the meaning of being a, in a protective area such as a forest, then something calls you to fall out or fall away from it, this protection. God has us in a protection. And we the one, by the words we speak, remove that protection. Just like Job. Job was in a protection. He had a hedge around him. There was a protection around, hedge around Job. And Satan could not penetrate it no, how, no matter how hard he tried, so he eventually gave up. But Job removed himself out of the, this protective hedge of God by the errors of his tongue, fear and pride. Job said, 325 of Job, For the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me, and that which I was afraid of has come to me. Another virgin says, For, for uh, what I fear most overtook me. What I dread happened to me. We're going to pick this up next week, the next time. But I want you to remember the day you need to re do a response paper on the, day, uh, the, the day's lesson. What I learned and what I'm going to do with what I learned. And until the next time, Lord, I thank you that the listeners will put a watch over their mouth. God, you put a watch over their mouth. For every word that they go forth will glorify God. Holy Spirit, we just thank you for being our helper. In Jesus' name, amen.